Hello LEGO fans, welcome back to LEGO 48. One of the first useful videos that I did looked at various spacer designs. The most effective design that I had at that time was this butterfly wheel design. I love the way this looks when it runs, but it's big and not as elegant as it could be. Since it depends on gravity, it also needs quite a bit of height, which limits where it can be used. Instead, I came up with this idea of having a more compact design with rails for the balls to run on, with a stop at the end, and a rotating axle with a short beam on it that can lift one ball at a time over the stop. Here's an example of this mechanism in operation. This design is nice and compact, and I used it very effectively on my crisscross track last year. Unfortunately, there is a problem with this design. It's susceptible to push and random arrival. If the beam is at just the wrong angle, then balls can ride up the beam and right over the stop at the wrong part of the cycle. The reason this happens is because the axle is in front of the stop, so balls can contact the back side of the lifting arm. I can fix that by moving the axle past the stop and using a longer lift arm. I'll need a little more clearance underneath, but only a plate or two, and the improvement in reliability is totally worth it. Because of the lifting action, the second ball in line will sometimes stick to the first one and want to climb up with it. The solution is to add a tile or plate over the second ball to keep it down. The fact that balls are getting lifted up one brick height as part of the timing mechanism means that the overall height drop is greatly reduced. If you assume a one plate drop entering the spacer and another one plate drop on exit, it's actually possible to lose less than two plates of height with this design. I used this design on my arm lifter at Air and Scare, where it worked perfectly all day long. Note that this design is meant to align with the rest of the module right here, where the axle comes out. For this example, I'm using the axle as the mount on both sides, but that's just so you can see how it works. Normally, I would attach technique bricks to the front side and mount this side using a pin that's in line with the axle. Yes, the axle is still being used as a structural component, but the spacer is held firmly in the other three corners, so the load on the axle is minimal. Depending on the design of your module, it might be necessary to align the spacer on the studs rather than between the studs. So I also came up with this alternative design. In moving the axle, I also had to redesign the stop to hold the balls in the right place. This particular variation also uses wedge plates on the outfeed because I actually need a lower output height. If I wanted to maintain the height, I could certainly replace the round tiles and wedge plates with 1x3 tiles. One of the neat things about this design is that since it's based on a 3L lift arm, there are other mods that could be made, depending on how many balls per cycle you need. For instance, you can put into opposing beams for two balls per cycle. You could use a tri rotor for three balls per cycle. Or you could use a pair of L shaped beams and spit out four balls per cycle. And if you really want to get fancy, you could always use two quarter round beams for that classic butterfly look. What I like about this design in general is it's very easy to build, it's reliable, resistant to push and random arrival, and because the movement is all rotational, there isn't any vibration. This design has worked really well for me and I hope that you'll find it useful as well.